Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size. This will be the first of a series of Bite Size talks about special interest groups. It's something that we recently introduced, and it's basically uh, if you if there's a specific topic that spans more than just one pipeline or one area, then these people can come together in these special interest groups and discuss things that are relevant to all of them. And uh, today we have the first of these special interest groups uh, that is talking about anything that is meta. Uh, is there something in the background? And anyway. Um, but I'm very happy that today here is uh, James Fellows Yates and Daniel Lundin, who are the leaders of this special interest group. So I'm handing now over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Fran. <clears throat> um, right. And to start with, uh, this is all about meta and it's all about omics. And I suppose you, most of you, for most of you, it's rather clear what omics is. But the meta here is then community. So these are things for. When we, we when we don't only have one single species in on in in our focus, right? So, uh, microbial ecology in, is the field that we cover, and to some extent also macrobial ecology. But the primary interest here is microbial ecology, and as a real background to, for why we we are interested in microbial ecology to begin with, microbes are everywhere, as it says here on the picture and are extremely important in many places. Um, microbes are important for human health and not only then by uh, with the uh, pathogen single species that cause disease but also affecting our health uh, through their co through communities of, of, of different microbes. So gut, the gut microbiome is the one that is probably best known here. Um, in the marine ecosystems, uh, nearly 50% of global carbon fixation goes on, so CO2 conversion. And most of that is done by microbes, so single cell or organisms. These are typically not bacteria, although some are, so the cyanobacteria, but other uh, eukaryotic phytoplankton. But microbes are also important in water and soil and other, other ecosystems for how they cycle elements. So nitrogen fixation is an extremely important process in many ecosystems, forests, marine ecosystems and so on, but also phosphorus, particularly in, in, in soil e ecosystems where you have fungi that uh, take care of phosphorus cycling. And also my, microbes are important in many foods like uh, yogurt is, Typical example, but also cheese and many other types of food uh, production. So when it comes to microbial ecology, what we want to do, what we want to know about the community that we study is basically who are there. So the species composition or something similar, population composition perhaps. What are they capable of doing? And then capable, it's typically metabolism, but it could also be if they are capable of moving around in the water or or some or other, other traits. But then we are also interested in <clears throat> what they're actually doing when we take our samples. And with all mixed techniques, we have ways of uh, addressing these questions. And the first question that who's there is typically based on DNA sequencing, and it can either be amplicons or PCR products of a single marker gene or a few marker genes, or actually shotgun DNA like in metagenomics. Um, metagenomics is also, so shotgun DNA sequencing of a community is also the method of choice to see what this community is capable of. So the genetic composition in ideal cases at the level of individual genomes. And then third, what they're actually doing, that's when we turn to RNA sequencing or perhaps in rarer but still important cases for proteomics, um, so meta, meta transcriptomics and meta proteomics in this case. Yeah, so what we're calling metaomics then in our interest group is all the methods that aim to then simultaneously analyze the entire multi-species potential and realized functional capacity of a biological sample or several samples. So taxonomically and functionally study that this community, what they can do and what they 
are doing right now. And the special interest group then is then a community of researchers within the NF core zone in a sense then. And we would like to stress that we're interested in attracting both users and developers. Developers, of course, to continue development of, of the pipelines, but also users to get feedback and provide help with how to use uh, our pipelines in their various projects. And with that, I turn to you, James. Thank you very much. So why uh, have we decided to set up a special interest group about this particular topic? Um, to take a example from metagenomics, uh, within NFCore, we already have um, a very uh, complementary suite of pipelines that work very well. They cover all sort of the, the major steps, so to say, of a metagenomic study, for example. So taking this diagram from uh, Chris Quince and told in 2017, you have all the sort of wet lab biology stuff sequencing. And then going into the QC results based on their figure they have here, we have NFCore detexizer for removing sort of um, host reads and other um, potential sort of uh, lab artifacts. We then have NFCore create text DB, which allows you to create um, various databases for metagenomic profiling. We already have NFCore mag uh, and also uh, technically uh, N uh, meta T de novo for um, uh, reference free based assembly and identification of uh, uh, of, of the sequences in our metagenome, but also with NFCore text profiler, we can also use reference genomes that allow, typically allow you to align short reads and long reads directly to reference databases. Uh, oh, yes, uh, and so already just this part of metaomics, um, we have quite a few pipelines that are very complementary, work very well together to go in this direction. So. We've already made this diagram, which if you were in the Metaomics uh, Slack channel, took many, many, many weeks <laughs> to get around. But we've tried to map out exactly sort of what type of pipelines and sort of what the Metaomics um, group would be potentially covering. Of course, this is not a limit limited to these pipelines. These are the ones we've identified as being the most relevant. So already a data input, we have a variety of more generic pipelines, such, such, as, such as Fetch NGS and Detexizer that are not directly relevant to Metaomics as in they can also be used in other contexts, but they're very useful for us. We also have this upstream pre-processing pipeline, which is the create text DB to create the databases for our prime analysis, which is typically um, who is there. Um, so fortunately, our slides have gotten a bit funky here, but this includes pipelines such as MagMap, Mag, MetaTonovo, and uh, Ego. Ooh, there we go. And this all covers the primary analysis. So typically the who is there, what are they doing, or the, the general, uh, whole metagenome approach. But then also we've included in here secondary analyses. The reason why I'll, we bring this up, I'll come over to in a minute. But in the secondary analyses, these are complementary pipelines which can theoretically take the output of these various sort of primary, primary analysis pipelines and do um, additional analyses which give you even finer sort of results, finer insights into the metagenome you're looking at. So for example, if you were to run text profiler and mag, there's two pipelines I work on to sort of taxonomy classify who is there uh, overall. So looking at all the bacteria and the viruses and the RK and eukaryotes, but maybe then you get really interested saying, hmm, okay, I see lots of phages in there. I want to go and look very specifically at uh, phages. Then you could take the output from MAG and run this into phage annotator um, to get a, a, yeah finer insights, more precise results into what you're, you're looking at. Um, so like I said, very, very many pipelines here, all very complementary. They can work theoretically very well together. And so this is where the metaomics group uh, comes in and sort of where we want to find what we want to do. So for developers, um, we want to help coordinate among the different pipeline teams um, compatibility uh, between the pipelines. So allowing chaining of the different pipelines and also reducing redundancy between the pipelines. Some of the pipelines have functionality, which also in others and probably it's probably better to run them in two separate pipelines because each have a richer set of features. Um, this, this chaining of pipelines is something that's very, very interesting that I think is one of the, the first tasks that we want to try and do. Initially, maybe by working out common ways of it for all of these pipelines in the primary analysis um, section to export sample sheets that go directly into secondary analysis. 
If you ever run fetch NGS, you might be familiar with this system, but we want to try and make this generic and applicable to all pipelines. And also to help co coordinate the long-term development and team handovers of the different pipelines. Um, as you can see for, uh, here from NF Core Mag and this sort of Wikipedia style rockstar diagram, you know, when you have the, the, the time periods which all the members of a band has been given in, that actually Mag's been quite successful in having an initial developer, which I created in, who then transferred over to Gabe, uh, Daniel and, and uh, Straub and Sabrina, who continued working on this between 2020 and 2022. And that's now more recently been taken over by myself and a couple of other people and as well diversifying this thing. And as I'm sure many of you know, um, stagnation of pipelines and sort of um, deprecation of, of pipelines and tools in general bioinformatics is a big problem. A lot of investment goes into making a tool which then gets abandoned once someone finishes their PhD. So I hope that also by being able to work together, get a nice community within our collection of pipelines, we'll be able to you know shuffle teams around and help people maintain these pipelines for a much longer period. For users, what we want to get out of this special interest group is firstly, just generally promote and assist in the adoption of NFCore metamorphic pipelines by new users. So maybe taking approaches similar to what we have at the NFCore office hours, if you've used those recently. Um, we may have like a specific section uh, for metamorphic pipelines where you can come as a new user um, and ask questions or get help setting it up. We also would like to maybe for the development side, uh, develop standard parameters to make it easier for users to then actually transfer and switch between the pipelines. So already with NFCore, one of the great things is you have this um, very standardized interface and website and documentation structure, um, uh, which means that you can very easily switch between each pipelines and quickly find where in the documentation you need to find some particular information. But one thing that is quite um, Discordant often, and this is something actually Maxime Garcia has been bringing up for many, for well, a few years now, is that you know some of the parameters, so let's say dash dash run Kraken2 might be uh, in another pipeline dash dash execute Kraken2, or how you supply database files might be different. So we may consider um, coming up with a standard schema across all of the MetaOmics pipelines, which allow us to have um, an even more um, standardized and familiar interface for users to um, work things through. Another thing that will be very useful and actually would like users to come and get involved in is helping actually documenting how we can um, use the first level metaomics pipelines uh, with secondary pipelines and tutorials and things like this. So we need people to write these tutorials, how to you know run maybe fetch NGS that goes into text profiler, which then goes into something like page annotator. Um, and it's not just then within um, uh, and of course, this may be applicable. Maybe there are other really, really good next other Nextflow pipelines, or dare I say it, SnakeMake pipelines, which maybe do uh, something different that maybe um, you want to switch out, let's say, the primary analysis uh, pipeline before going to an NF core secondary um, pipeline. So we have documentation for sort of an examples on how to link all of these other tooling or software or tools um, with the NF core pipelines that we already have. Um, and again, this would have to become from the community, people running these pipelines regularly or want to run it for a particular context. Let's say uh, I have one person who often wants to run mag, but looking for fungi, even though most people normally run microbes, it might be nice for them to work with us to um, write tutorials on how to you know, pick out the certain bits of files and settings and things like you need to actually uh, run the pipeline for this particular context. And how do we plan to do this? This is still a relatively open question at the moment. Um, we uh, want to get feedback on the activities and our objectives from, from the MetaOmics community within NFCore and outside. Currently, the ideas we have are things like maybe a monthly meeting um, of the pipeline developers and potential contributors where we can you know, actually talk and sort of plan a bit more on the standardization and pipeline chaining techniques. We're also thinking of um, further integrating the group by um, having dedicated hackathon days. So in addition to our um, bi-yearly hackathons uh, online and then in, in Barcelona, maybe having an extra, maybe just one day or, or two days where we can all come together and work specifically on these metaphorics pipelines. Another new idea we had was maybe dedicated exhibition days. So this is not for developers, but rather for users. So we would have the different um, primary or, or, or team leads of each um, pipeline, give presentations and demos and tutorials on how to run that particular pipeline. Um, again, for the metaomics um, 
uh, community, not just in inner core, but outside, you know, to pull in more users and also maybe potential contributors. And also we're open for new ideas here. So if you have any ideas, please um, come and uh, join the Slack channel or in the chat, or, you know, you know also mute, unmute yourself during the questions session to suggest things here. So if any of this is interesting to you, um, we have our website, so on NF Core under special interest groups, you have to click on the community drop down to get there. We have the Metaomics um, page there, which describes, sort of summarizes a lot of the stuff we've talked today. We have on the NF Core Slack, the uh, Metaomics Slack channel. So please join that now uh, to keep up to date. We're also gonna have start off by having these monthly meetings. The time and date is to be confirmed because we want to see what is the best time for everybody who wants to join. Um, so there's already a poll on uh, a when to meet on Slack, there should be. I might have to check that is not a few too many um, uh, messages behind. I'll repost it after this, this, this talk. But otherwise, the link is here whoop, that you can get to. And there's also a QR code if you're a big phone. And also, uh, if you're coming to the NF Core Hackathon and Nexpo Summit in, in the end of October in Barcelona, we are potentially considering having a dinner together um, to get to know each other a bit better. So if you're interested, please also go to the Slack channel. And there is a message there where we try to poll who would be coming. And if you're interested in coming and having dinner together, where one of us will try and arrange uh, a restaurant somewhere. So I think that's it from me and Daniel for now. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, thank you very much. So uh, anyone who wants to ask a question can now unmute themselves. So feel free. You have a question? No, I'm like, I think it's a great initiative and I really like that. And if you're shy, you can also leave the questions in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you go back to your secondary analysis, the, the slide, uh, I don't remember which slide. Yeah, if you go... Yes, here. So you said, for instance, we can take the result from the text profile and then we can run the secondary analysis. Um, but it's very often we say, like, uh, for instance, the classification result from a text profile and they are false positives. Are there any like secondary analysis actually check that? Because if they are false positives, it's difficult to run, for instance, the font, font scale or something else because they are false positives. That depends entirely on your approach and your project, I would say. Um... Some analyses don't worry so much about that. Um, others do. Mm -hmm. um, this is why we we brought up the idea of having examples and um, documentation on how to, you know, maybe insert other tools, standalone tools, which may address questions such as false positives before you run the next secondary analysis pipeline. Um, mm -hmm. If you have ideas or suggestions, it would be a perfect thing to talk about and, and, and discuss here. Mm -hmm. I think I think actually this is where the discussion in the multi omics group starts, right? With these kinds of questions, this is what we're after to to cover in the group. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I have another question. I'm sorry. I seems like nowhere else asked about it, so I will take the chance. So, are there already some documents about how to use output from one pipeline as input to another pipeline, or how do you combine two pipelines? Are there already examples about how to do that? To my, I don't know if Daniel knows, but to my knowledge, there's not yet. It's a hot topic, and there's also discussions going around about this, but there's nothing formally described. No, I don't know any, of anything either. So. And no. this is exactly why we want to set up this group to facilitate this and be the first and the best at doing it. Yes, that would be a very exciting thing. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, actually. How mm -hmm. did you figure out who, which pipelines are supposed to be in this interest group? This started off by, I think it was I went through just the ones that I knew directly were related to this, this topic. So mm -hmm. based on that diagram in metagenomics, I showed near, near the beginning, you know, this was the assembly, the reclassification, uh, both by shotgun and AmpliSeq, which is the other very popular one in NF Core. This is, in metagenomics, at least, and microbial ecology, the primary analysis. So I went there, I dumped, okay, this is the idea of a metagenomics group. Do you have any other suggestions of pipelines which may also be related to this? And so organically just spread out from there, uh, seeing what the community suggested over time. Hmm. And then we discussed it a bit to evaluate which pipelines did fit in and did not. Um, so people have, had to give a good justification um, where it makes sense that we included that in. 
but you actually have active um, members of any of those pipelines in your interest group meetings? Yes. Or can someone yep. be also uh, against their will, let's say, in an interest group? They don't have to come, of course, but um, if someone has proposed that, let's say, you know, they're using differential abundance to process this output is a user, so not a developer, um, they could be the person to sort of write the documentation how to link these together. Right. So this, so just to be clear, this diagram is more a theoretical, what you could potentially do. It is not necessarily uh, inclusive of everything. There may be things that are missing here. Um, there could be things which are not directly specifically from metaomics. So differential abundance is it more of a generic pipeline that's applied to many different contexts. Um, but theoretically, it will be used by a lot of researchers who are running these upstream pipelines. And some some upstream work might be done by other people. I know that people have been using RNA seq for meta meta transcriptomes with some pre processing processing that I suppose. But so that we have excluded things that are a bit maybe a little bit too general to fit here for our focus on particularly on metaomics. But we are more than welcome to have people working, applying those pipelines in this context mm -hmm. to join as well. This is just, yeah, again, sure. just, just an example. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions from the audience? It seems it's very clear. So thank you again uh, for this really nice talk. And uh, also thanks to, to the audience for listening in. And uh, I'll hope to see you back for the next bite size. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye.